In this video, I'm going to talk about revenge trading, what it is, why it's so dangerous, the causes of it, and how to overcome it. All right, what is revenge trading? Revenge trading is when you want to get back at the markets because you lost some money. This usually happens after a bad beat or a losing streak or a trade that you felt that you should have won. Why is revenge trading so dangerous? Revenge trading is super dangerous because you get emotionally involved in trading and you aren't able to take a step back and understand what you're doing in the present moment. So when that happens, you have a tendency to keep on trading and trading and trading and trading until you lose a ton of money or you can even blow out your account. All right, now let's get into the causes of revenge trading. The first one is ego. Some traders think that they're smarter than the market or smarter than other traders or they just get hurt easily and their ego gets bruised when something goes wrong. Another potential cause of revenge trading is feeling like you're behind. Maybe you feel like you should have been successful 10 years ago and you're just trying to catch up. And this can lead to overtrading, trading too big, and eventually blowing out your account. The next cause is greed. You wanna grow your account really quickly, so you put on these huge trades with huge risk, and then you lose, and then you get mad, and then you put on another huge trade to make it all back. The next cause is anger. Maybe you have a predisposition to get angry quickly. That's just part of your personality. And that's just how your personality is. So don't judge it, but just accept it for what it is and figure out how to fix it. Another cause of revenge trading is market personification. Do you give the market a personality or do you think the market is made up of a certain type of people? For example, maybe the market is made up of, or you think the market's made of, greedy traders or brokers that are out to steal your money. And that can lead to a negative mindset and thinking that the game can't be won because of these shady people that are out there. The next one is market metaphor. What metaphor do you use for the markets? Do you think that it's a battleground? Well, if you think it's a battleground, then you probably have to kill somebody. And that can lead to feelings of aggression, um, retribution, you need to get back at the markets. And that can cause revenge trading also. Okay, this is the second to the last cause on my list, and that's just habits. Um, do you have bad habits where you uh, tend to lash out at people, or do you tend to try to make up for your losses really quickly? Uh, this could be in anything except trading, right? And maybe you bring that to trading, so that could be another reason why you tend to overtrade when you uh, when you lose. And the final reason that I believe traders revenge trade, it's because of trauma. And this sounds kind of weird maybe, but uh, if you have any trauma uh, in your body, in your mind, uh, from you know your childhood or previous experiences, then that can really weigh on you and that can be causing you to do some irrational behaviors that are losing you money. So consider the trauma, consider your psychology and what is influencing your decisions. Okay, so those are the primary causes of revenge trading. Now let's get into some solutions. The first solution is to cut back your lot size. So trade much, much smaller. If you're risking 1%, risk way less, maybe like a quarter percent or even half a percent until you can figure out this revenge trading thing. Because if you're trading smaller, you're much less likely to blow out your account. Another way to prevent revenge trading is to implement a rule. So for example, I have a rule called the two strikes rule. I can't take more than two trades on the same trade idea. And that prevents me from trying to get revenge on that one trade idea. So once you have a rule in place like this, before you trade, you're much less likely to violate it while you're trading. Okay, the next thing you can do is figure out your cue and your reward. This is talked about in Charles Duhigg's book, The Power of Habit. But basically you wanna find out what is your cue, what sets you off and sends you down that downward spiral of uh, revenge trading. Then you wanna figure out what reward are you getting from that? Are you, do you have a feeling like you got back at the markets or do you feel like you are controlling the situation now? What, what's the reward? And once you can figure that out, you can substitute uh, another thing that's positive for the negative reward, right? So in the case of revenge trading, the negative reward is you feel like you got back at the markets, but along with that also comes a huge loss. Whereas if you substitute the reward of maybe you feel like, you, you wanna feel like you are in control of the situation. So you could go and work out instead and you feel pumped up, you feel energized, you feel like you did something good for yourself and you're in control of the situation. 
and that gets you away from the screens and prevents you from revenge trading. All right, so what if you can't figure out a good way to substitute the reward? Well, you can just focus on the queue. Now, let's say that your queue is uh, if you had a bad day at work and you come home and you had two losses in a row and that usually leads to uh, revenge trading. Well, when that happens, then you can write, write it down in your plan that if that happens, you will immediately shut down your uh, computer and you won't trade anymore. It's the shutdown rule. And that can steer you away from some big losses and it'll help you get more sleep ultimately, right? So that can be a, one way to prevent yourself from trading when the trigger happens. Another thing you can do to prevent revenge trading is to use a positive market metaphor. So in the causes section, I talked about a metaphor that uh, does not serve you. It's a negative metaphor, like a battleground or a battle arena, right? So change your metaphor for the market to something more positive. For example, maybe it's a network of traders who are looking to make a better living from anywhere in the world. And that can make it a much more positive experience and make it less likely for you to try to get back at these people because it, you know you don't want to get back at positive people you want to get back at negative people right so that could be one way to prevent revenge trading another way to prevent revenge trading is to raise your heart coherence heart coherence has been proven to stabilize people help them make more rational decisions and is used by professional athletes before competitions so this is one way that you can calm yourself down before your trading session and that will make it much less likely that you will blow up during the trading session. Measuring your heart coherence is really easy. There are a lot of devices out there that can do it. And if you reference my blog post, I'll give you links to a couple of them that I recommend. Next, remember your environment. Everything is energy and we're all gonna resonate with our environment. So if you hang around with negative people, you have a disorganized uh, trading desk, then that's going to rub off on you and it's going to make you uh, less coherent, less centered, and more likely to revenge trade. So make sure that before you trade or do, when you're trading that you aren't with negative people, you have a clean environment, and that will help keep your mind clearer. The next thing you can do to prevent revenge trading is to remember the odds. I know this is pretty logical and revenge trading is emotional, but if you put this up on your computer screen somewhere, it might help you not get into that downward spiral. So remember that uh, revenge trading is ultimately gambling. You're not following the system, you threw the system out the window and you're just trading on pure emotion, right? And this is akin to gambling. So you can think of it like the lottery, uh, the mega millions jackpot. I think the odds are one in like 300 million of winning. Whereas with a good proven trading strategy, you can have a win rate of, you know, upwards of 70% or more, right? So just remember those odds and which one is going to help you build wealth over time. And finally, and most importantly, figure out the sources of your revenge trading. What are the sources of your anger? What are the sources of your ego getting bruised? And this could take some therapy. This can take some, really some contemplation on what is driving your emotions. And I recommend a few types of therapy in my advanced trading psychology blog post. You can take a look at that. But that helps you really get at the root of the problem. All right, so if you have problems with revenge trading, please implement some of these strategies, give them a try. And most of all, don't judge yourself too harshly. That only leads to more uh, negative emotions and it'll make it more likely that you revenge trade. So forgive yourself. Understand that this is just your behavior right now and you can change it and take some steps to change it. All right, if this video helped you, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button below, and thanks for watching.